um, involved in the collective uh, growth and research, which is um, somehow the driver behind um, all the degrowth conferences so far. Um, you may have come across him already um, because he co-edited uh, the vocabulary for um, a new era, era, era <laughs> uh, on degrowth. But he is not only talking about degrowth, he is doing practical things as well. So you might like to join him uh, in his workshop on participative organic olive farming, which takes place on Thursday. Um, our second speaker is Silke Helfrich. She is a driver and inspiring figure in the Commons movement in Germany. Deswegen nehme ich an, in Deutschland kennen viele. Ich gebe zu, dass es alle hier verdient haben, aber wenn wir nicht klatschen, können wir nachher mehr diskutieren. Ähm, ja, was äh, für einige vielleicht oder viele von euch neu ist, dass sie Mitglied ist des Taufrischen Kommen-Instituts in Deutschland, aber natürlich arbeitet sie nicht nur in Deutschland, äh, sondern sie ist auch Mitglied des Cameron Strategy Group, in der wirklich so ähm, strategische Fragen zum, zu Commons ähm, auf den Weg gebracht werden. Wer weiter zu ihr ähm, oder von ihr was hören äh, will, mag äh, zur Magical Mystery Tour gehen. How Sharing Multiplies Happiness. Und das findet auch, nee, das findet morgen statt. Our second lady and third speaker is Nicola Bola. She has worked with social movements, research activists and uh, journalists in Australia, but also a lot uh, in Asia. So for quite some years, she was coordinating focus on the Global South Climate Justice Program. Climate justice is her topic. Um, and since 2012, she is based in France. And from this perspective, we will hear now, I guess. But if you like uh, to know more about her work, you might like to join her um, presentation about responses to the Euro crisis, strategies for the degrowth movement, also taking place tomorrow. And last but not least, we have Alberto Acasta. He was, uh, no, ich kann jetzt wieder zum Deutschen wechseln, denn er hat in den 70er Jahren in Köln studiert und versteht mich dankenswerterweise. Uh, er ist ja schon vorgestellt worden, nur für die, die etwas später gekommen sind, die der Zug erst jetzt hierhin gebracht hat. Er ist Wissenschaftler und Politiker aus Ecuador, hat da die verfassungsgebende Versammlung geleitet, die uns mit dem ja, wichtigen Begriff und der wichtigen Idee, äh, wann wir wir in, Ver äh, ja, in Verbindung gebracht hat, dem wir, glaube ich, alle sehr nahe stehen und das wir alle äh, sehr inspirierend fanden. Soweit zu unseren Panelists und natürlich haben wir uns Fragen überlegt, die wir Ihnen mit auf den Weg geben wollen. Zum einen ist, jetzt kommt es wieder in Englisch, weil die Fragen auf Englisch gekommen sind. How is the growth connected to the situation in your country or in the countries you work? How is it connected to your movement? How do you see the connection between the growth and the global situation in general? And, nice question as well. Um, why do you see, or do you see Leipzig and Germany as a good place for a degrowth conference? What is the point to be here? So these are questions they, you might like to pick from. You don't have to answer all of them, of course. But what we like to hear from you is, what do you expect from this conference? Please let us know that. Soweit die Fragen, die im Vorfeld überlegt wurden. Aber natürlich habt ihr, haben Sie auch die Möglichkeit, Fragen an das Panel zu stellen. Es sind Leute unterwegs mit Karteikarten und Stiften, auf die Fragen aufgeschrieben werden können. Sind in den, in den Mittelgängen, übrigens auch in den beiden anderen Räumen, nicht nur hier im Audimax. Diese Fragen können eingereicht werden, bis Alberto mit seinem Beitrag beginnt. Denn dann werden sie gesammelt und geklustert und dann zentral wieder an das Podium herangetragen. Also, wenn ihr was Brennendes habt, seht zu, dass das innerhalb der ersten drei Redebeiträge ähm, 
aufgeschrieben ist und dann uns erreicht. So, wenn alles gut geht, haben wir für diese Fragerunde dann 30 Minuten Zeit. Und das alles gut geht, ist in der Hauptsache mein Job, indem ich versuche, das so zu moderieren, dass jeder zu seinem Recht kommt. So, Federico, the floor is for you. And you, all four of you, might decide if you like to give your speech sitting or if you like to come up here. Should I put the microphone on? Yeah, but I th oh yes, sorry. I'm not sure if it's. My, I think it's my microphone. Is it working? Yeah, it's working. It's fine. You are wonderful. <laughs> right from the start. This conference is already a success. Congratulations and thanks to the local organizing committee. Nowadays, the Grove and its conferences are flourishing, but the Grove is certainly not new. The historical roots can be traced back to very old world transitions and philosophies, but don't worry, I will not develop this now. But let me just say that the first one to use the word the Grove was André Gortz. It was 1972s. And of course, there was a big debate on the limits to growth. However, it was only at the beginning of the year 2000 that French environmental activists launched sustainable degrowth as an activist slogan. Nowadays, degrowth is not only a European movement, but it's becoming a world movement. Degrowth, since the start, is a missile world, world to repoliticize environmentalism and the fake consensus around sustainable development, or even worse, around green growth, the super oxymoron, we could say. Since then, the growth is placed at the junction of several sources or streams of thought, which cross each other without being in competition, such as social and environmental justice, ecology, ecological economics, critique of development, and objective of well-being, or when we vivir, or summa causae, or with so many equivalents expression in so many different other languages. The growth is about breaking away from myths and false solutions, such as economic growth. But it is also about constructing in solidarity new and diverse imaginaries. Since 2008, research in the growth has promoted the international conferences. The intention was to have regular and recognizable events where scholars, civil society, and practitioners come together to update each other on their degrowth-related activities and research. We decided to call them International Conferences on Degrowth for Ecological Sustainability and Social Equity. Degrowth, in fact, it is a desired direction, but not the final end. The basic idea is that society will use less materials and energy, but especially will organize to live radically differently in solidarity, voluntary simplicity, and conviviality. Since the Grove was launched as a slogan a decade ago, many initiatives have been organized at the local level in cities and countryside. The movement spread and concept has entered the academic debate with over 100 articles and seven special issues in academic journals. It is also being discussed in the political arena and in mainstream media. All this contributes to explain where we are today, together with the circumstance of the so-called crisis as if it was unexpected, temporary, and reversible, instead of manufactured. We live under the rule of the autocracy, but we know that there are no social democratic and Asian solution to the economic crisis, and even less to the social and environmental crisis. In Europe, the United States, and Japan, we cannot force the economy to grow in order to pay for the mountain of debt. A large part of the debts cannot and will not be paid for. We can live well with some the growth, with social solidarity and without such a burden of debt. There are social and political movements in the South and in the North pushing in this direction. The growth must be closely allied to environmental justice, ecofeminism and the commons. 
Alliances must be established with movements such as Via Campesina, with urban squatters and guerrilla food gardeners, and also, quite often, with industrial workers' unions. So-called economic degrowth implies dispossession of indigenous people and peasants in countries like India and many others. And the increasing exploitation of a large proletariat, often female, with industrial tragedy such as last year in Bangladesh. On the environmental front, the growth is needed also because the exploitation of natural resources is increasing in the world. Many people are killed defending the environment. In Europe, we must be aware of this. But nowadays, most political, economic, and intellectual leaders assure us that nothing fundamental can be questioned. So it is time for a new vocabulary. As a product of the international conferences, Research and Degrowth has edited the book that was mentioned before, titled Degrowth, a vocabulary for a new era. It presents and explains the different concepts and lines of thought, imaginary, and proposed courses of action that together complete the panorama of degrowth as a movement. It demonstrates that degrowth is now consolidated as a research area and as a field of social and political activity. A new vocabulary is a first step towards the key political challenge, taking back the power to imagine and build a post-capitalist and post vacuum society fit for human beings and other species to live and prosper in it. On the international conferences, an international loose degrowth network already exists, and the future of degrowth is in your hands. Soon after this conference, we will make an open call for the organization of the fifth international conference, which will take place in 2016. We wish people to plan an equally ambitious and well-organized conference as this one. More in general, and with this I conclude because the time is over, we should learn from feminists. We should focus on care. In the last two years, the local organizing committee in Germany has put a lot of efforts in taking care of the degrowth movement. Now, these days, it is your turn to actively participate and think of how you can contribute to taking care of degrowth, these days and in the future. With this, I wish you all a wonderful and fruitful conference. And once again, I want to stress our gratitude to the members of the local organizing committee for giving us the chance to be here. Long live convivial degrowth. Thank you. Thanks, Feder. And now directly to Silke. Also, jetzt gibt's was Wohltuendes auf einheimische Ohren. Muttersprache. Ich werde auf Deutsch reden. Ich, ich bin sehr froh, dass ich mit meinem Kollegen David Bollier zu diesem wunderbaren Buch beitragen konnte und kommt alle morgen Abend zur Präsentation. Das, was der Federico eben vorgestellt hat. Ich möchte hier kurz skizzieren was diese Commons sind und mit Degrowth zu tun haben. Ich bin sehr einverstanden mit dieser Idee, ein neues Vokabular zu entwickeln. Und da ist noch viel zu tun. Wir Commons haben da auch ein Problem, das ich vorhin schon ausführlich mit den Übersetzern diskutiert habe. Commons sind nämlich keine leblosen Güter. Wie es das deutsche Wort Gemeingüter suggeriert. Kommen sind lebendige soziale Prozesse. Und deshalb sind Commons überall möglich. Commons sind überall möglich, man muss sie nur tun. Man kann also Commons nicht passiv vorfinden, aber man kann sie aktiv herstellen. Okay. Wie habt ihr es denn lieber? Aus oder an? Okay, ich kriege eine halbe Minute länger. Man kann also Commons nicht passiv vorfinden, sondern man kann sie nur aktiv herstellen. Nehmen wir ein Beispiel, das heute, über das heute schon viel geredet wurde, die Atmosphäre. Kommen die Atmosphäre, die Atmosphäre die wir soziale Prozesse. Und deshalb sind Commons überall möglich. Commons sind überall möglich, man muss sie nur tun. Man kann also Commons nicht passiv vorfinden, aber man kann sie aktiv herstellen. Okay. 
der Atmosphäre darum, diese überhaupt erst mal zu einem uns gemeinsamen, zu einem Kommens zu machen. So gesehen ist dieser Satz, dass die Atmosphäre ist ein Kommens, schlicht analytisch falsch. Und wo dieses gemeinsame Machen nicht bewusst gestaltet wird, da gibt es auch kein Kommens. Wenn wir also von Kommens reden, reden wir nicht von Dingen, sondern von uns. Oder konkreter gesagt, wir reden von der Fülle, das ist übrigens auch ein sehr beliebtes Wort in der Kommensbewegung, wir reden von der Fülle unserer Möglichkeiten und Schwierigkeiten, all die Dinge, die niemandem alleine gehören. Wasser und Land, Wissen und Software. Mit denen so umzugehen, dass drei Bedingungen erfüllt sind. Erstens, niemand wird über den Tisch gezogen. Zweitens, diese Dinge, die wir gemeinsam nutzen, sind auch morgen noch da und wenn möglich besser oder mehr davon. Und drittens, unsere individuellen Handlungsmöglichkeiten erweitern sich, ohne diejenigen der anderen einzuschränken. Das ist Ökologie, Soziales und Freiheit zusammengedacht. Und das geht grundsätzlich nur erstens jenseits der Marktlogik.
Herzlichen Dank, Silke. Nicola, I have the impression you would like to... You are coming up, okay. Um, hi, good evening everyone, and yeah, in English. Um, um, and the lights are just perfect as they are, you don't need to change. Thank you for the invitation to, to speak, it's, it's really a great opportunity to make a link um, with the, the work that I've been involved in and, and the terrific stuff that's happening here. Um, uh, and, I mean, how lucky were we to have those fantastic and inspiring speeches from um, Alberto at the beginning and Naomi. And I think that between them they sketched out brilliantly um, the, the depth and the breadth of the crisis that we're living through. Um, so they were inspiring. But for me, this is, this is what's really inspiring, the fact that there are 3,000, I think, um, people registered to come and spend four days at a conference. Um, the energy in the room, the youthfulness in the room, if such a word exists, youthfulness outside of cosmetics, youthfulness of the, um, the people in the room. And, and I must say I'm really very impressed with the innovative process that the organising team has used and, and the very rich program that has emerged out of that process. Um, I think these are very kind of prefigurative practices that we should, that we should replicate. Um, so the question is, what, what do I expect? Um, uh, I, I mean, I expect to learn a lot. That's, that's personal expectation. But what are my expectations of you? Um, and I think what, what the challenge is and what I would hope is that we can think about how to turn this magic moment of four days into a movement moment so that what happens here goes beyond and continues to, to engage and to, to be creative and to have an incredible momentum that continues to, to carry you through, um, not only in your own work and processes, um, but as being part of a huge and diverse and absolutely necessary movement for system change. Um, and I think the question I would like to ask is, is how, do we, um, how do we translate the, the rich thinking and the, the rich practices that are represented here in this conference, how do we translate all of that into concrete political demands, concrete institutional demands, concrete policy demands. How can, what has the degrowth movement got to say to the political class um, in this age of austerity? What has the degrowth movement got to say in the face of climate change? And what has the degrowth movement got to say in this moment of civilizational crisis? How can, and, and already um, Silke and, uh, and Federico have, have spoken eloquently to this, how can the degrowthers, that's what I'm calling you for the moment, um, link to commoners, to buen viveras, I don't know how you would call it buen vivera, um, to the uh, ecological and social justice movements, to indigenous movements. I mean, how do we make all of these links that are absolutely fundamental if we're to have any chance at all of building the sort of change that we so desperately need. Um, so for me, that's the challenge here. What are, what are the political demands that could come out of this kind of, of gathering of, of people? Um, and just to finish, to be very concrete about, you know, how we can build these commonalities and these movements, how can, how can the rivers of all of these movements merge together and, and reinforce and strengthen each other and enlarge. Um, last week uh, in Paris, we had the um, uh, Attack uh, European Summer University, which I imagine 
At least some of you may have been there, and that was a wonderful experience. And on the weekend following, there was a, the first uh, international meeting uh, for preparing for the COP21, uh, which is the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change um, Summit, which will be held um, in Paris in 2015. Of course, there's the COP20 this year in Lima, uh, which is a very important stepping stone to continue to build the movement and to, to link uh, between the North and the South. And so at this weekend meeting, there was a very um, honest and I think critical um, assessment of what had happened um, in Copenhagen in 2009. And I also imagine that there were a number of you who were involved in, in mobilising and, and being part of, of what happened in Copenhagen. And I think what everyone realised is that it's not enough just to mobilise for a summit. We have to do something which has its own momentum, it has its own vision, it has its own um, logic and framework, that it's not simply um, determined and shaped by summits as they come and go, because summits will come and go and we will always be disappointed. That is a given. Um, so the idea is, you know, how do, how do we actually use these as opportunities to enlarge and build a real movement for system change? And I think the the, the ideas and the energy and the experiences that come out of your own local practices, your academic work, your collective research is incredibly valuable when it comes to thinking about how we can actually build this movement. So I guess on I think there are some French uh, friends and colleagues in the room. So on behalf of, of, of them um, and me, uh, I hope that you will all um, use this opportunity in the, in the coming 12 months to participate in the, the meetings that will be happening in, in Paris and elsewhere in France um, and to build a momentum that will take us not only uh, to Paris in 2015 but far away and beyond that. So thank you very much for, for being here and I'm looking forward to the magic moment becoming a movement moment. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nicola. And yeah, Alberto is on the. Letzte Chance für die Karten, ne? Ab jetzt ist wird sortiert. Una de las tareas más importantes que tenemos entre manos es desarrollar una estrategia para...
de los recursos energéticos fósiles. Comencé en casa. Comencé en casa. Comencé en casa. Let's look at the uh, carbon of uh, fossil fuels. We have to leave two thirds of the fossil fuels in the ground uh, to prevent a, um, a temperature rise of more than two degrees. And we are far from that. As a civil society, we have, we have a responsibility to convince Texaco and Co to leave the oil in the ground. That's what we tried with uh, the Yasuni Itete initiatives. This is a holy uh, place. This is a sacred place. And we have to make that tangible to, to them as well, because we have to preserve uh, the Yasuni National Park and uh, this richness. Another aspect I'd like to emphasize, when we talk about degrowth, it also entails curbing the consumption and reducing, changing the lifestyles of people in the global north as well, especially in Germany. A study has been published on that. I think it was in the Spiegel in May this year, where it said that 10% of the richest people in Germany um, own more than 53% of the assets in Germany. And 50% of Germans do not even have 1% of these assets, of the total of assets. So what we need is a decommercialization of nature. In Ecuador, for example, we it was enshrined into law that uh, water is a human right and that it cannot be privatized. All public goods, all common goods, have to be accessible by all, and they must not be, they cannot be privatized. And one important aspect in such a new econo economy is decentralization. The um, um, The communities themselves have to have the control um, of their resources. They have to be able to control the energy consumption, for example, and um, how much energy is available. We also have to look at the distribution of power in our societies. Do we have to fight power in the economy? Is decentralization the um, um, the communities themselves have to have the control um, of their resources. They have to be able to control the energy consumption, for example. Alberto and that we get the technical problem fixed. So there are really been quite some problems. Was genau funktioniert nicht? Yeah. If you don't hear the English translation, then bewegt euer Gerät. Please move your receiver. That might actually be due to it. Um, das Dolmetsch Technik Team rennt hier die ganze Zeit rum und versucht alles zu lösen. Uh, und hier ist einfach Zwei Sachen eingeschaltet und der Ton zu laut, deswegen gab es die Rückkopplung. The technical team is running around and trying to solve the issues. We are sorry for them. Thank you for your patience. Okay. Sind Sie schon da? Ja, wir können noch warten.